my name is Mason Bobro. My pronouns are he, him. I have hereditary factor 10 deficiency, moderate, severe, and I am a transgender man. I am also um, queer on the sexual orientation side. So it mostly has to do with my transition, um, more the medical aspect of my transition than the social aspect. Because I have a bleeding disorder, there are obviously complications with surgeries. I had a hysterectomy and that was all sorts of complicated. I had to stay in the hospital for two days after, I think it was two days after my laparoscopic hysterectomy, which is way longer than normal because of the bleeding disorder and some things that they were worried about. Additionally, um, Hormone interactions between hormone replacement therapy and things like factor are not known. So who knows if that's affecting me or not, but I thought I would include it anyway. I'm not sure if this is because I'm young or because I was assigned female at birth or because I'm transgender, but I feel like I don't get taken seriously in a doctor's office. Um, again, it could be for any of those reasons. It's definitely palpable in a doctor's office when you walk in and they don't and they brush off your concerns and it's very frustrating. And I've had uh, periods of time where I felt like I needed help, but I would go to the doctor and I would get nothing and I didn't want to go to the doctor anymore because I felt like it wasn't going to help me. There are many reasons. Uh, the first is that transgender people and non-binary people are disproportionately affected by social determinants of health, like housing and food insecurity. Uh, additionally, trans and non-binary healthcare needs are often not covered by insurance or they're covered, but you have to jump through a million and one hoops to get coverage and get full coverage and get coverage you desire for a surgeon that you want because every surgeon's results are going to be different. Additionally, current care for trans and non-binary people is lacking. Uh, data collection on intake forms is limited a lot of the time. There's only one question asking you for your sex and there is no question about your gender identity or if they have two questions, they don't have any non-binary options. Additionally, there are very limited treatment options. When you are when you go into the doctor's office and you tell them that you're trans and you want to medically transition, you sort of get spoon-fed this, oh, this is the path you have to take to medically transition. And what they don't tell you is that you don't have to take that path. You don't have to go in the order they tell you you have to go in. You don't have to get top surgery before you get bottom surgery. You don't have to get any surgeries at all. You don't even have to do any sort of medical transition at all, but it's important to highlight healthcare for trans and non-binary people for all of those reasons. The biggest thing is that we have different needs. We as transgender and non-binary people have different needs from the general population, but we also as individuals have different needs from one another. Uh, for example, trans and non-binary people may be less comfortable with certain subjects like nudity or in heavily gendered environments like an OBGYN office. Additionally, due to social determinants of health, we're at more at risk than the general population for certain illnesses such as HIV. Uh, we're in social situations where, you know, certain things like sex work are more common among transgender non-binary individuals than in the general population. This is particularly pertinent given the history of bleeding disorders and HIV AIDS, so hopefully that that crisis is behind us. And at the same time, we as individuals are different from one another. For example, what I want is not going to be the same as what someone else who is a trans man, a feminine trans man is going to want in terms of our medical transitions. So we can't all be put in the same box. The number one thing is that you should stay safe. Do not do anything that, that is going to put yourself in danger 
that you think is going to put yourself in danger, if you're in a location where advocating is not safe, please do not do so. We got you. <laughs> um, but if you are in a safe place where you can advocate, Protesting is a good traditional route, as are petitions. Uh, more modern routes are being active on social media. I don't really have room to talk. I don't really have social media. But that is a great way to make some noise about your story and have your issues be heard. Keep telling your story everywhere you go. Uh, when people ask, answer. That's the best way to advocate. It's the best way to get people to see who we are as a community and to be more open to us um it's a shame that we have to convince them but it's the best way to do so the first thing i'd like to see as far as trans and non-binary inclusion goes is inclusionary language i know that we have the very fantastic women girls and people with the potential to menstruate people who have or have had the potential to menstruate acronym WGPPM. However, we don't have an equivalent phrase for people assigned male at birth, which is a shame. And I've also noticed that this language is not used everywhere it should be used at. Um, it's gaining traction, thankfully, but it needs to gain more. <laughs> There's still a long way to go. Additionally, I would personally, this is a personal thing, I would like to see transgender and non-binary exclusive spaces. We do have LGBTQ exclusive spaces, uh, but trans and non-binary specific spaces will foster community among trans and non-binary people who have or are related to the bleeding disorders community and will also allow us to share specific needs, for example, with NBDF that we come up with as a collective instead of just you know for example me sitting here telling you as an individual what my issues are uh and finally i would personally like to see informational materials on how to navigate uh trans and non-binary specific issues like changing your name and gender marker for health insurance or finding health insurance that will or providers that can navigate both your gender identity and your bleeding disorder Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it very much. And I appreciate the work that you and NBDF and everyone is doing to make things more inclusive for trans and non-binary people. Um, it's come a long way and I hope to see it grow into something more. Mm -hmm.